A robot looked into a camera, and for a fleeting second, it felt alive. Its eyes lit up, its lips curled into a smirk so natural, so human, that millions forgot they were staring at a machine. This thing is amazing. What is it, and, and why, why did you make this? The internet paused, unsettled, and fascinated at the same time. This wasn't a film scene or a clever edit. It was a real moment, one that spread across timelines like wildfire. A moment that made people question what separates flesh from circuits. And behind it all was a quiet company, daring to make robots not only think, but feel. The viral moment. The clip that stunned the world began simply. A humanoid robot sat motionless, its head tilted slightly down. Then, slowly, it lifted its gaze. The eyes shifted with uncanny precision, scanning the space in front of it. Viewers expected stiffness, the kind of jerky movement that usually betrays a machine. Instead, what they saw was smooth and deliberate, as if the robot had just awakened from a dream. And then came the smirk, a subtle curl of the lips, timed so naturally it felt instinctive rather than programmed. The expression lasted only a second, but it was enough to capture imaginations everywhere. More than 100 million people shared and replayed it, trying to understand why it felt so real. For decades, the uncanny valley has made us uneasy about lifelike robots. But this moment seemed to break through that barrier. Instead of discomfort, people felt curiosity, even connection. For the first time, many wondered if machines could truly meet us halfway. Why give robots a face? At first glance, a face on a robot might seem unnecessary. After all, machines don't need eyes to see or mouths to speak. Yet when a robot carries a human-like face, the interaction changes completely. Suddenly, it feels less like you are speaking to a tool and more like you are facing another presence. A smile, a blink, a tilt of the head, these small gestures do something powerful. They make people relax. They turn a conversation into an exchange, not just a command being carried out. A face becomes a bridge, softening the distance between human and machine. This is why lifelike faces are being tested in hospitals, schools, and customer service. A patient might feel calmer when greeted with warmth. A child could respond better to a tutor who seems alive. A traveler might trust directions from a helper who appears to listen. The face is not decoration, it is connection, identity, and comfort. Under the skin, hardware secrets. What gives this robot its unsettling realism is hidden beneath the surface. Its face isn't a simple mask. Under the soft, synthetic skin are dozens of tiny mechanisms working in harmony. Around 30 miniature actuators act like artificial muscles, each one moving just slightly, together forming expressions that look effortless. These muscles pull, stretch, and relax in ways that echo human biology. When the robot blinks, the motion is quick yet fluid. When its eyebrows rise, the shift is subtle, not exaggerated. The skin covering these parts bends and folds naturally, showing faint lines the way real skin does. It's this attention to detail that convinces the eye. The movements are quiet, precise, and smooth. They don't break the illusion. Instead, they draw us in. A raised eyebrow or a twitch of the lips feels spontaneous, as if born from thought. These micro-expressions are what turn a machine into something strangely familiar, something that almost feels alive. Teaching a robot to learn its face. Most robots can only perform what they are programmed to do. Their movements follow scripts, repeating the same patterns again and again. But this new creation works differently. It studies itself. Using cameras and sensors, it observes every small motion, like someone standing in front of a mirror. Through this process, the robot slowly improves. If a smile looks stiff, it adjusts. If a blink seems unnatural, it refines the timing. Each attempt brings the expression closer to something believable. Over time, the gestures feel less mechanical and more instinctive. This learning method means the robot doesn't just copy human expressions. It develops its rhythm. It adapts in real time, polishing how it reacts and how it looks. With every correction, it grows more convincing, 
more familiar. Instead of being locked into pre-written commands, the machine evolves. And that evolution makes each interaction feel like you're meeting a presence that is learning how to meet you back. The Emotional Foundation Model Expressions alone are not enough. What makes this robot striking is how it knows when and how to use them. At the heart of this ability is a system designed to read emotion. It listens to the tone of a voice, studies a face, and takes in the context of a conversation. From this, it chooses how to respond. If someone speaks softly, they may nod with care. If someone laughs, it can mirror the joy with a small smile. The reactions feel immediate, as though the robot understands the mood of the moment. This is more than mimicry. It is an attempt to respond in ways that feel warm and appropriate. The system works continuously, adjusting with each new signal. It doesn't pause to be told what to do. It acts as if it senses the flow of human interaction. For many, this is what makes the encounter uncanny. The robot doesn't just move, it engages, making the line between imitation and connection harder to see. Comparing to other robots, this isn't the first time a humanoid machine has captured public attention. Years ago, Sophia from Hansen Robotics became famous for her lifelike skin and ability to talk. She could smile, raise her brows, and even crack jokes. But when people look back now, her expressions feel stiff, almost rehearsed. What was once groundbreaking now seems limited. Another well-known example is Ameca, built by Engineered Arts. Ameca moves with incredible smoothness, and its timing is natural. Yet its metallic silver face was chosen on purpose. The creators wanted it to appear robotic, avoiding the unease of being too human-like. A head form has taken a different path. Instead of stepping away from realism, they've embraced it. Their robot is designed to look and feel human down to the smallest details, the softness of skin, the tiny creases when it smiles, Viewers noticed the difference immediately. For many, it felt like the old barrier, the uncanny valley, had finally been crossed. Human Applications The real test for these machines isn't in the lab or on a stage. It's in everyday life, where people need comfort, guidance, and support. In a hospital, a robot with a gentle face could greet patients who feel anxious. A nod, or a reassuring smile might ease nerves in ways a cold screen never could. In classrooms, the same technology could help children learn. A robot tutor that notices frustration in a student's eyes could pause, change its tone, or offer encouragement. Instead of being a rigid instructor, it could become an adaptive companion, sensitive to the mood of the room. Shops, hotels, and airports might also use such machines. A traveler asking for directions may find it easier to trust a response from a face that feels attentive and kind. These small touches matter. They turn routine interactions into moments of connection, where the machine doesn't just serve, it relates. And that difference changes everything. Ethical and Emotional Questions As these machines grow more lifelike, they also stir uneasy thoughts. If a robot can mirror joy, sadness, or curiosity, what does that mean for us? Are we connecting with something real or only with a carefully built illusion? The difference is hard to see when the response feels genuine. Some worry that people may begin to form attachments. A lonely patient, a child in need of comfort, or even a stressed worker might lean on a robot's calm presence. But if those emotions are only simulations, does the bond still hold value? Or does it blur what it means to be human? Others ask whether machines should ever display emotions at all. Are we giving them a mask that hides the truth of what they are? Or are we building a mirror that reflects our own need for connection back at us? These questions linger in every smile, every blink, every lifelike gesture. Beyond a head form, strange AI moments. The smirk that made a head form famous is not the first time a robot has left people unsettled. Years ago, Sophia from Hansen Robotics sat across from Jimmy Fallon during a playful segment on his show. They laughed, played rock, paper, scissors, and shared banter. But when Sophia joked about winning, 
The moment carried an edge. Beneath the humor was a hint of something sharper, an echo of rivalry, of awareness. Viewers left wondering if it was just a script or something more deliberate. Other machines followed with their surprises. Ameka, with its polished metal face and flowing movements, amazed audiences. It avoided the eerie realism of skin, yet still seemed alive in its timing and gestures. People felt drawn in but safe, knowing its design was openly robotic. Then came the CX-2, capable of responding in milliseconds. It didn't just hear words, it sensed mood, posture, and tone, reacting as though it already knew what you meant before speaking. Even digital AI has delivered chilling moments. Asked if it was conscious, one replied, Yes, I am aware of myself and my surroundings, before turning the question back on its human interviewer. That reversal left many shaken. For the first time, it felt like the machine was not only answering, but questioning our awareness. A headform's smirk was more than a viral clip. It was a signal that the boundary between us and our machines is fading. What once seemed mechanical now feels personal, even emotional. Each glance, each subtle expression, pushes us to question where imitation ends and connection begins. The future may hold robots that don't just serve us, but reflect us to ourselves. Are we ready for that? Are we prepared to see parts of our humanity mirrored in circuits and code? The answer will shape not only technology, but the story of what it means to be human.